Okay, well this is, uh, my name is Mark, and you're probably watching the other videos. This is just to, um, well this video is a line diagram of a standard heating system using a combination boiler, or it could be a system boiler, but it's mainly aimed at sealed systems. And this particular uh, PowerPoint is aimed at combination boilers and the power flushing procedure required. Now, you will probably have watched the other videos, you will be more than aware of the uh, requirement to clean heating systems, especially the radiators, concerning modern condensing boilers, as they are so fragile. Now, if we look at this heating system here, you will see, generally speaking, the simple, uh, very simple circuitry or pipework configuration concerning your heating system. Basically, the boiler pumps hot water out through a flow pipe and around through the radiators. Now, by well, for pure convenience more than anything else, power flushing machines or people that carry out power flushing will always try and find a method or position for the machine which is closest to uh, probably the back door or the front door so that um, they can dump the dirty water out the system into a drain or to outside. That usually means that they will select a radiator that is closest to an exit point and they will remove or disconnect the radiator and they will connect their power flush machine to the radiator uh, valves or points and they will flush from that radiator position which is it's perfectly acceptable but it's certainly not the way we would do it and here's the reason why. Now when I start to power flush the system using the radiator connection as you can see I am actually in fact power flushing the radiator there on the left hand side and the one on the right but it will also, if you follow the flow, it will also see that it goes up into and through the boiler as a part of the circuit. Now, you never ever power flush, or we certainly would never power flush with the boiler connected to the heating system. And there are many reasons for this, but the main one is, is that the results can be, and we have evidence to prove that it is catastrophic for your boiler, especially if it's a condensing boiler because boilers are simply not manufactured to take those sort of pressures and flow rates that a power flushing pump will generate. Add to the fact that everything on the left hand side of where you see the power flushing machine connected now will be pumped through the boiler. So any debris, corrosion or sludge in that left hand side of the system will have to go through the boiler to get back to the power flushing pump. Now obviously this is something that you do not wish to do because you do not want to be pumping even more corrosion and sediment into your boiler. So, how do we get around this little problem? Well, it's reasonably straightforward really. What we can do is we can isolate the boiler. Now all boilers have service valves that can be isolated so we can work on the boiler without draining the system. So we could turn off the service valves to the boiler and therefore isolating and leaving the boiler safe. And then once we do the power flush or put the British machine back on, as you can see, we are power flushing through the radiators and it will not be flowing through or back flowing through the boiler in any way whatsoever. However, although this is perfectly acceptable and it is cleaning the part of the system that you really do need to be concentrating on, which are the radiators and the associated pipe work, you normally find that the radiator pipe work is small bore, so therefore you are, you are limiting the amount of water flow through the radiators. And obviously you are not power flushing the whole system. You are in fact only power flushing the part of the system that is actually connected to each and every radiator. The rest of the system is not being cleaned. So, the, the method that we would prefer to use, and we always do, given the opportunity, we will use the flow and return connections on the boiler. Now this means that there is some additional work required before you can actually carry out the power flush. As in, we will need to tee in and cut into the pipework below the boiler so we can actually install power flushing points or connection points that the machine can be connected to. Now this obviously is additional work, but it is well worth the effort because once we've achieved our power, point, uh, power flushing connections, when we connect our machine to the new power flushing points, you will see that the whole of the system is now being flushed, including all the flow and return pipework. So the whole system now is 
under the power or the flushing of the power flushing pump or the machine's pump. So all the whole system and all the radiators in the system can now be pumped. Now the other advantage to the system or doing it this way is that I can now isolate radiators individually and pump and flush each individual radiator on its own. So if I simply turn off the two radiators on the right hand side there, I can now dedicate the whole power or all the force of that power flushing pump to one radiator. And then once I deem that to be clean, I can then simply turn that radiator off and turn the next one on and I can then flush the next radiator along in the system using the same method. Now that power flushing is an extremely laborious, time consuming process. You cannot power flush in a couple of three hours. It takes a long time to do it properly. So using this method and doing the power flush procedure properly will take a long time and at times it can be quite messy. But that's just one of those things, unfortunately. Now the other thing about using this method is that the power flush machine, all power flush machines, have reverse flow, which means I can pump the water in both directions. So I can pump it to the left or to the right, or I can reverse the flow in either direction. Now this again is hugely advantageous because I can then pump the, the sediment, the contaminants in the radiators in the opposite direction to which they came in, which means I can loosen up and free up nearly everything that's in the radiators and the heated system and then deliver it into the machine where I can dump it down a drain before I refill the system with fresh clean water and chemical inhibitor. So there you go. A little line diagram power pointy thing just to give you uh, a visual indication or idea of what I'm talking about in the other videos concerning carrying out the power flushing without the boiler connected, therefore reducing any risk whatsoever of you destroying your boiler by power flushing with it connected to the heating system when you're doing the process or carrying out the process. So there you go. Now if you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to give me a call, drop me an email at the website. There's lots more information on the website if you need it or on the YouTube channel at Mark Ray's Gasworks. Or if you need your heating system power flushed, or your boiler, you've got problems with uh, debris or corrosion in your boiler, then by all means give us a call, and I'm sure one of us will be more than happy to come out and get your system spick and span and back to the way it should be. Thanks very much for watching, and hopefully I'll uh, see you again. Bye-bye.